Hello, welcome back to our channel. Now we are going to discuss about day 6 class motion in a straight line from the velocity. Before the velocity, I already have completed in day 5 class. See, follow that. What is the velocity? General formula for velocity, we are calculating the displacement with respect to time. Our displacement by time is called the velocity. So, displacement is the x and time is the t. But the difference between speed and velocity is the velocity is the vector quantity and speed is the scalar quantity. That's why right. displacement is also vector. We can show like this. Unit is meters per second. Dimensional formula is lt power minus 1. You can say that clearly it is a vector quantity. Then average velocity. Average velocity is the total displacement total displacement by total time. Suppose you have started at x1 meters, then you are ending at x2 meters. Time is the, initial time is the t1 and final time is the t2. So here simply you should write x2 minus x1 by t2 minus t1. Otherwise delta x by delta t. This is the average velocity. Like that instantaneous velocity the rate of change of displacement means limit is time time is very small particular time at particular instant we have to measure the velocity that is called the instantaneous velocity so v equals to rate of change of displacement is called the instantaneous velocity in previous class already i have given that how to find out the differentiation suppose x equals to 4t square plus 3t plus 6. Find velocity at t equals to 1 second. How to find out this one? x equals to 4 into dy dt of t square. Differentiation of this. Plus 3 into dt by dt. Plus d by dt of 6. After simplification 4 into t square differentiation is how much 2t plus dt dt cancel plus 0 but clearly they are mentioned that velocity at velocity at t equals to 1 second so instead of t we are writing 1. 8 plus 3 11 meters per second this is the velocity so from this what you are understanding rate of change of displacement is giving the velocity. Then our further topic is the acceleration. What is acceleration? Rate of change of velocity is called the acceleration. So simply we can say that A equals to dV by delta V by delta T. Sorry, unit is the meter per second square. Dimension formula is the L t power minus 2. You remember that it is a, it is a vector. It should be right. Final velocity minus initial velocity by time also. This is the acceleration. Based on this, always you should remember that one side based on the differentiation. Look here. Velocity equals to rate of change of displacement. Opposite of this one, x equals to integration of velocity is giving the displacement. Then acceleration equals to rate of change of velocity. Then velocity equals to integration of a dt. It is representing entire system and it is representing fraction of the system. And here integration formulas you should remember that t to the power of n into dt is t to the power of n plus 1 by n plus 1. Suppose integration t power 5 into dt, t power 6 by 6. Integration of sin t into dt minus cos t. Integration of cos t is sin t. Integration of 5 into t square into dt. 5 into t cube by 3. 
so like that you should remember the integration concept and the differentiation concept and both are not equal one problem we are doing based on this suppose we are giving velocity equals to 4 t q <coughs> find displacement at t equals to 0 seconds to t equals to 1 second. How to find out c displacement equals to just now you know that x equals to integration of v dt. Limitations are t equals to 0 to 1 second. Split this one. 4 into t cube into dt 3 into t square into dt plus 6 into integration of dt. Limitations are 0 to 1. What is the formula? t cube integration is the t to the power of 4 by 4. 0 to 1. 3 into t cube by 3. 0 to 1. Then 6 into integration differentiation cancel. Then 4, 4 cancel, 3, 3 cancel. First apply the upper limit. Instead of t, what we are writing? 1. 1 minus 0 because 1 power 4 is the 1 plus 1 cube minus 1 minus 0 plus 6 into 1 minus 0. After simplification, our uh, displacement is how much? 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 6, 8 meters. So, from the velocity, we can find out the displacement with the help of the integration. Like that, when we know the well, acceleration we can find out the velocity and displacement also. Then our further concept is equations of motion. Now we know what is the distance, what is the speed, what is the displacement, what is the velocity acceleration. Based on that whenever the body is having the straight line motion for finding the acceleration, velocity, displacement, initial and final velocities we are using the four equations of motion. What are those? First one is the V equals to U plus AT. Second one is the UT plus half AT square. Then third one is the V square minus U square equals to 2AS. Then SN equals to U plus A by 2 into 2N minus 1. What are the uses of this one? Suppose when you know the initial acceleration, initial velocity, acceleration and time. You can find out the velocity. Like that depends on the situation we can use. Suppose one example problem we are doing. <coughs> find the distance in fourth second. If u equals to 2 meters per second, n equals to 4 seconds, a equals to 2 meter per second square. Then First three are not suitable. Clearly they are asking nth distance, nth second, how much distance is covered means we can go through the fourth equation of motion. So S4 equals to, instead of U, 2 plus 2 by 2, this is 4 seconds, 8 minus 1. After simplification, 2 plus 7, 9 meters. Same question, look here. Find the distance. Find the distance or displacement in 4 seconds. Got the clarity? Only for 4 seconds, it travel 9 meters. Only, only, but total 4 seconds, how much distance it travels? We can go through the second equation of motion. S equals to U is how much same parameters we are taking. Instead of time, 4. Half into A is the 2. T square is the how much? 4 seconds. 60. S equals to 8 plus 60. 24 meters. This is total 4 seconds how much distance it travels. And this is only in la only 4th second how much distance it travels. That is the difference. Not only this one, we can go through the Suppose initial velocity equals to 0. 
in the problem initial velocity equals to 0. See, if u equals to 0, immediately how to write the first equation of motion v equals to kd. If uniform acceleration means velocity is directly proportional to time. When we are drawing the graph between these two, time is on x axis, then velocity is on y axis. Both are directly proportional means it is uh, passing through the origin. Then, second equation of motion, s equals to half a t square. Means displacement is directly proportional to t square. Then, we are getting this. This is the time, this is the displacement. Inclination, here acceleration, uniform acceleration. If it is deceleration means you can get like this. This is the time and this is the displacement. Deceleration means decreasing velocity. Acceleration means increasing velocity. Here tangent is always slope is the positive. But here slope is the negative. If you want deep explanation, you can go through the motion in a straight line chapter. Parts wise it's there, you will get full clarity on it. Then, third equation of motion. V square is directly proportional to S. Here, this is the S and this is the V. We are getting like this. <coughs> These are the equations of motion and you should get the graphs are like this. Now, always you should remember that area under, area under velocity time gives what displacement. So, displacement equals to velocity into time. So, multiplication is nothing but area. You know that area of the square is what is the length into breadth. This is the time. This is the velocity. 0 to 4 seconds like that. How to find out the displacement area is length into breadth. 4 into 2, 8 meters. Like that triangle is there. Here 0, 2, 4. Here 2, 4. How many geometrical shapes are there? This is the time and this is the velocity. Here how to find out the displacement x equals to. This is the square. Area of this one. See this is the triangle. 1 it is. <coughs> First one is the half into base into height. Base is 1. Height is the 2. Second part is the. 2 minus 1, 1 into 2, length into breadth. Then, third part, this is the third part, 4 minus 2, 2 into 2. Then, fourth part is half into, base is how much 2, then height is also 2. So, this is the 2. When we are adding all this, we can find out the area. So, 1 by 2, 1 plus, 2 plus, 4 plus 2. This is the 2. Then finally you are getting 6 plus uh, 3 is the 9 meters. So from the graph also we can able to find out the distance, displacement and whatever it is. Suppose it is the ratio. Slope of the graph is nothing but representing the ratio of this one. Slope is positive slope and negative slope especially for acceleration and deceleration. Decreasing velocity is called the deceleration. Increasing velocity is called the acceleration. Look here. Slope is nothing but tan theta. X axis. Opposite by adjacent. Suppose example we are taking. This is the time. This is the displacement. Here theta equals to 40. <coughs> Sorry. 45 degrees. How to find out the velocity in this? You know that velocity is displacement by tan. Nothing but tan theta. Tan theta value how much? 45 degrees. So this is 1 meter per second. Like that. <coughs> this is the time and this is the velocity. V1 is the 
60 degrees. V2 is the 30 degrees. Find the ratio of V1 and V2. V1 by V2 is what? This is acceleration. Find the ratio of accelerations. Tan theta 1 by tan theta 2. Tan theta 1 is nothing but what? Slope of the V1. This is the V1 and this is the V2. This is the tan 30. 1 by root 3. And next one is the root 3. After simplification, a1 by a2 is 1 by 3. So blindly we should remember that ratio is nothing but slope of this graph. And multiplication is nothing but area under the graph it is representing. So this is belongs to the equations of motion and all this. Then our next topic is acceleration due to gravity. What is acceleration due to gravity? The acceleration produced by the earth when the body is freely falling. Not only this one. Any body you know that it is attracting towards the center of the earth due to the gravity. This is called the acceleration due to gravity. A equals to this value 9.8 meter per second square on the earth. Now there are different cases. Remember that if the body is projected upwards, A equals to minus G. For some calculations purpose, we are taking 10 also. If the body is coming downwards, A equals to plus G. 9.8 meter per second square. Now I am going to explain, there are three things, one is the projecting upwards, if the body is projecting upwards, then A equals to minus G. First equation of motion, V equals to U minus GT. Second one is UT minus half GT square. Third one is V square minus U square equals to minus 2gs. Then this is u minus g by 2 into 2n minus 1. Second condition throwing downwards. Throwing downwards. Then sv equals to u plus gt. s equals to ut plus half gt square. Then 2gs. Then s equals to u plus g by 2 into 2n minus 1. Don't confuse. Previous four equations of motion we use it for the person is traveling on the surface, running, walking, vehicles and all this. But the person or body is going upwards, coming downwards, throwing into the air. We can go in to these equations if it is coming downwards, if it is going upwards. This is throwing downwards. Then dropping the body. Always we should remember that whenever the body is dropped, then what happens? Initial velocity is equals to 0. Then how to write the first equation of motion? V equals to gt. S equals to half gt square. Then V square equals to 2gs. Sn equals to initial velocity is 0. G by 2 into 2n minus 1. Here also velocity is directly proportional to time. Graph we are getting straight line passing through the position. Like that directly proportional to p square. Directly proportional to s. Here sn is directly proportional to 2n minus 1. See this second one and first one when we are going through the ratio t square by 2n minus 1. If t equals to n, we can get it s by sn equals to n square by 2n minus 1. We do one problem based on this. Suppose n equals to 5 seconds. How to find the ratio of initial velocity is 0? <coughs> if n equals to 5 seconds, Initial velocity is 0. S by S fifth second is how much? Simply you can go through the 5 square by y minus 1. 25 by 9. Like that we should calculate the ratio of S and S. Then 
few more definitions we are going to discuss here that is the time of ascent time of descent time of flight maximum height and all this what is the time of ascent the time taken by the body to reach maximum height from the ground that is called the time of ascent time of ascent in the case of vertically projected body means theta is 90 degrees here <coughs> like this this is the ground when the body is projecting upwards it reaches to the maximum height how much time it will take that is called the time of ascent that formula you should remember that u by g like that time of descent the time taken by the body to reach ground from maximum height it is while going up coming down you can say time of descent same formula u by g then time of flight time of flight is mostly represented by capital T total time taken by the body to to stay in air means while going up while coming down nothing but time of ascent plus time of descent is 2u by g like that maximum height all these belongs to 8th class only h maximum equals to u square by 2g we do one problem if u equals to 9.8 meter per second square single parameter you know that from this how to find out time of ascent time of descent time of flight and maximum height look time of ascent time of descent both are same u by g 9.8 by 9.8 one second time of flight is the 1 plus 1 2 seconds maximum height is the u square by 2g 9.8 into 9.8 by 2 into 9.8 your answer is 4.9 meters like that we can able to find out the time of ascent time of descent and time of flight also <coughs> and always you remember that our further topic is if the body is projected from the top of the tower the body is projected from the top of the tower. Look. This is the tower. Height of the tower is the H. From here the body is projecting upwards. In this case, displacement S equals to minus H. Because it is measured from top to bottom. Then it is projecting upwards means A equals to minus T. Then we can use the third equation, second equation of motion, half a t square. Here, instead of s minus h, u t minus half g t square. So, whenever the body is projecting from the top of the tower or from the aeroplane, from the uh, rocket and whatever it is, from the bird, immediately you can go through these explanations only, these formulas. From this, h equals to half g t square minus ut we are using see this is the when the body is projected from the top of the tower how much time it takes we can use with the help of the quadratic equation we can find out the expression for time then our next topic is look here when the body is projecting upwards this is covering the point p at two times one is while going up it takes t1 seconds while coming down it takes t2 seconds so the given data is only we know the t1 and t2 with the help of this after simplifications otherwise directly you should remember that total time of flight is t1 plus t2 with how much velocity it is projecting half g t1 plus t2 then h equals to g by 18 to t1 plus t2 whole square this small h is how much from here to here half g into t1 into t2 this is very very important topic try to remember all these formulas here then relative velocity what is the relative velocity See, the velocity of one body with respect to another body is called the relative velocity. Look here, if we are taking relative displacement also. Displacement of one body with respect to another body is called the relative displacement. Like that relative velocity, relative acceleration. Look, 
if two bodies, this is the V A and this is the B. Velocity of A with respect to B. What is the meaning for this velocity of A with respect to B? It should be right V A minus V. Then V B A means velocity of B with respect to A. It should be right V B minus V A. But both are having the same magnitude V B. Simply we can say V relative. All these belongs to one dimensional relative motion. Two dimensional it is coming from the motion in a plane chapter. Now look here first equation of motion. U relative it first to U plus A relative into T. Then U relative plus half into A relative into T square. Like that here we can use this one. See, suppose VA is 5 meters per second. VB is 2 meters per second. Both are moving same direction, we can take the minus. Both are moving opposite direction, we can take the plus. See, VA and VB, both are same direction. VAB is how much? 5 minus 2, 3 meters per second. Then, both are moving opposite direction. Both are moving opposite direction. You can add this. So this is the crash course of this motion in a straight line chapter. Day 5 and day 6 you should follow that. Thank you everyone. Please subscribe my channel.